And welcome back everybody to Valhalla. All right, we've gone on our break. We serve some dogs, which Jill was not very excited about. I don't know what her problem is, but then we had Betty and Deal come in and they cheered us up a little and they were wonderful to see, of course. I always love seeing them. Back from break, no dogs in sight. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so some people asked if we could change it up a little. So I'm gonna take out uh, this one. And someone asked for, where is it? Snowfall, we'll put that in. You got it. Okay then, back to work. I only put it there just in case because if I put it at the end, I feel like sometimes we don't hear those because it depends how long the, the sequence is. Welcome to Vaha. Oh, hey there, Alma. Yeah, I just said in the last one that I didn't know where she was. It's been a long time since we've seen her. Oh, girl, how are you? Oh my gosh, it is so wonderful to see you. You don't look very happy. What's wrong? Uh-oh, what happened? Girl, what's the matter? Um. Oh. She seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer her up? Let's try to cheer Alma up. She might like classy drinks, but what she really likes... Oh, shoot. Um, what does she always order? She always orders the classy drinks. Yeah, 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 Brantini. She orders that all the time. That and I think the piano man or woman? But I think this one she said is her favorite. I'm pretty sure. Anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I don't know if we can make this. Oh no, we actually can't. One, two, three, four, five, six. A big one for my girl. One, two. Aged, mixed, girl, the biggest brantini ever. As big as your hate. Maybe this will cheer her up. Hey. Mm. And this? It's on me drink so you at least change your expression why not just say you're worried about me you got the message anyway didn't you <laughs> so how is it a brantini you do pay attention to what I ask for yeah of course I do you have quite the fixation with brantinis yeah she's I think she's always ordered one every time she's come in to be honest they suit you they do she looks like she should be sipping a martini all the time Miles Edgeworth, do you want to hear a silly story? <laughs> Always. When I turned 21, my dad and I went to a bar to celebrate, just him and I. He told me to dress well enough that he looked like my sugar daddy. It was a fun night. We pretended at times we were dating. I managed to blow off some steam about my mom. But the highlight was him ordering a brantini for me. I've had plenty of drinks and gotten wasted many times since I was 15, but that drink was different. It wasn't about getting drunk. The drink itself was the pleasure. He too said that they suited me somehow. Oh? Ever since that day, he's called me Brantini Girl from time to time. Your dad sounds like a cool guy. You should meet him sometime. So, why are you deflating? Deflating? When I got sad and started sighing repeatedly, my grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. <laughs> so what is it? Was it the news about the people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Alice Rabbit boom? Nah, that's old news. I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. Say, Jill, how's your mood right now? I want to ruin it by blowing off all my stored steam. Silly Alma, I've been feeling like utter shit the last couple of days. You can't make me feel worse. So go ahead, unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so... Remember my sister Diana? The one that separated from her husband and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something? A perfect summary. I'll use it next time. I didn't tell you the whole story then. Uh, more specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. Oh. However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. And I mean that. She never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her bread. She just expects the guy to do all that for her. I had no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad were hard workers. They even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. Huh. 
So, what does this fully capable woman do a couple of weeks later? Why, bring her abusive husband back, of course. What? Yeah, and the guy spent a couple of days with her before leaving her again. He had a nice couple of hot steamy nights and then left. I, I, well, huh, you reacted like my little brother and sister after hearing that. But the story doesn't end there, oh no. So she's broke and she can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get the money. And it was up to me to pick her up. For the last couple of days she left her kids with my parents. And being such sweet angels, they've made a mess out of the whole place. Bernardo and Eva are actually staying with me a couple of days to give him some peace. It doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So, we're in the car and she asks how her kids are. And of course, after all of the built-up tension, I just exploded. First, I started ranting about how her kids are growing up seeing some messed up stuff. I start scolding her about not taking responsibility, about not taking proper care of her children. I tell her that she's in no place to have all those escapades. And after all that, she just says, What the hell do you know? You don't have any kids. Oh, yeah, that's a comment, yeah. Yeah, you slutty skank, I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids, but I'm not leaving them in the first barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but I'm not letting the guy that hits me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I pretty much raised Eva and Bernardo and they've turned out pretty damn well. I don't have kids, but I'm not a cheap whore! Ah! Oh no! Oh, poor thing. She had to get it out. Damn. I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. I love my family and I put them above all else. But Diana is seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. Any way I can help? You just did. Huh? I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not the one to let stuff like that get to me. I'm still angry as hell though. And I couldn't just discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom your daughter is a slut. I just needed to get all of this off my chest, you know? Yeah, I understand. Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. Good one, Jill. Nah, all you see here is filled with love and dreams. Is everyone in your family as busty as you? The worst offender is my dad, actually. Oh. Jill, do you watch him? Kidding, kidding. Oh, never mind. I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs gene was Eva. She insists on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. These can actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. And the poor Bernardo. His breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take too much from my mother's side of the family. My father's sisters still look quite young, but when menopause hit, my mom lost her looks rather quickly. Any good genes you get from your family, Jill? Good enough skin and hair, I, I guess. There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but so far I haven't had problems with that. Oh, I see. All right, Alma, you all right? Hey, you know what worries me the most about the whole Diana situation? How your nephews are turning out? If she leaves them with my mom, they'll turn out better than her, somehow. Actually, what worries me is, what if I end up like that too? How so? If I find a good man and I settle down, what if he turns out shitty? What if I have a sudden burst where I want to live my life and end up like that? What if I have kids and I end up neglecting them because of all that? If you ask me, the fact that you're even worried about it is indication enough that you'll be fine. You think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that she pretty much married the guy after a couple of months, right? Yeah. Uh, well, no offense, but those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. Besides, if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your irrational standards. Hey! Am I lying? No, but there are things best kept as unspoken truths. Oh, I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. I sure hope so. For now, the time has come to get another drink. What can I get you? Um, get me something with ice, but alcoholic, please. Alright. Cold and without cold. What was the other thing I said that she usually likes to have? A p it's one of the pianos. I just don't know which one. Does this have ice in it? Oh, it does. 
Well, why don't I just do that? So four, six, uh, well, that one's already large. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm pretty sure she likes this as well. Rocks mixed. Honestly, I think she likes both of them. No, I think she likes the man and the woman. Here you go. Thanks, I needed to cool down a bit. That's why I'm here. I guess I probably could have given her a moon blast too, because that's like blended. So, you said you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? Don't think too much about it. Oh, come on. You heard my problems? I want to help you too. Don't worry too much. Right, I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You want to come? Sure. Something tells me this mega Christmas is going to be a mess at my parents' home. I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting chicken? I can get one. Mm, to be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want. It won't go to waste. Gotcha. Mm, say, Jill, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part? I guess I like legs the most. a girl, Jill. The thighs are the best. Don't at me. Really? I like breasts better. Yeah, you would. Also, I think they're talking about, like, are they talking about the tradition in Asia sometimes where they get fried chicken for Christmas? Kind of wanted to do that. I wish I could. I don't know if anyone's going to be delivering here at Christmas. I don't want to put the delivery people out here at Christmas, but man, I'd like to have fried chicken at Christmas. Breast is a bit too simple, don't you think? Legs have better texture. Maybe, but simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs and a lot less messy. Ugh, you silly girls. Pause? You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best parts of the wings. Okay, I will say that wings are also really good too. Boss, what's that? Spicy chicken wings. Where did you get spicy chicken wings? Well, I mean, you guys all know how I feel about chicken wings, right? From a spicy chicken. You know, spicy chicken in the shop two blocks from here. Oh, now I want fried chicken for Christmas. I wonder if I can make it happen. I wonder if John will let me. I'll let you guys know on Twitter how that went. <laughs> I was going to cook, but fuck it. What if I can get chicken, you guys? Uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Uh, well, because, uh? Thought as much. Yo, Armitage. Alma. I know what I said. Would the chicken you're talking about be cooked already? You might need to heat it up. But it'd be cooked otherwise. Great, I expect you here Sunday at 8 p.m. Thanks. Anyway, I'll be back to my office. <laughs> okay, enjoy your wings. She left the bucket. Oh, I guess we're enjoying the wings. You want some? Don't mind if I do. Oh, mild spice, nice. Weird. Maybe she got a mixed up order and that's why she left them here. She usually orders stronger stuff? I've found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh, that's that's the way to do it, you guys. I love knock you off your ass spicy chicken. That shit is so good. Do you guys like spicy food? I know some people like it, but they can't handle it. I feel so sorry for you. Oh. Uh, say, Jill, what kind of guys do you like? That's a sudden question. I'm not too picky with guys, to be honest. I want them to be decent enough. Not jealous, not aggressive, responsible enough to keep a job. That's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Yeah, she's asking the good stuff. Um, no tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never liked either. Oh, well, I guess I'm out of Jill's league. Then shit. What about you? I like them well-dressed. If they go out in iron shirts and well-coordinated clothes, they're sure to catch my eye. Some muscles always fine too, but sharply dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. That's how I like my men. My potential husband, on the other hand, is another matter completely. I see. So, can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turned out to be spicy. What do I get you? Anything, as long as it helps me with the spiciness in my mouth. Okay. Should I... Let's help give her something to get this open to spiciness. Should I go with my theory and give her the woman too? Does it matter? Yeah, she likes both. I'm pretty sure she's ordered both. So let's do it. Are oh, they're getting a little bit cryptic with what I'm supposed to do here. I've been very lucky that I've just been like paying attention to what they say. 
Oh, this one doesn't have ice in it though. Uh oh. Uh, I don't know if this one's right. Like, wouldn't she want something with ice? I don't know. But I know she likes this though. Here. Oh, it helped. Thanks. All right. So next question. What kind of girl do you like? Ugh. Mm hmm. You first. Sorry, I don't swing that way. God damn it. One day, Alma. One day. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but... No, I prefer men in my bed. Now you. Shit. Just calm down. I, I, I guess I like girls with light-colored hair. Light-colored hair? Yeah. You know, like redheads and such. Ah, shit, Pog. Maybe I'm in, guys. What about white? Like your boss. You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? <laughs> Sorry, it's just that when she got here with the bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. You also have light hair, Alma, I just like to point that out. Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. Ah, uh, it's really true that Jill, I think, does have a small little crush on Dana. It's great. Hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. I just felt like teasing you. Uh, so, light colored hair? What about blondes? Do you like me? Yeah, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls too and I start hitting on you. Would you go along with it? Nice body, pretty face, and a good apartment? I wouldn't ever let you go. <laughs> okay then, enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you were feeling shitty these last few days? What? Oh, that. I told you not to think too much about it. And I told you I want to know. Come on, Jill. You've heard of my problems so many times. Now I want to help you. Yeah, Jill, come on. She's trying to help out. She's your friend. Come on, come here. Eh? I told you to sit here. Come on. Uh, uh, what? What are you? Oh, look, we get to see ourselves. Did Ava put us on the other side of the bar? That is so funny. All right, then. Now I'm the bartender and you're the client. Oh my god, Jill is so cute. Hardly. The bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay then, I move this here, click the- oh, oh my god, oh my god, I'm sorry. A uh, little bit of a warning there. I'll try to put that on the video description, oh my gosh. That was a little glitch there. Now it works for you, for me, that dog in the Hawaiian shirt. Why with him too? He's a dog in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. All right, and how did you even manage to- she hacked it, Jill, that's what she does. Oh, yeah, hacker. All right. Now we've changed the rules. You've been feeling shitty. Mind telling me why? It's a long story. I don't even know where to start. Starts from the beginning. Yeah, Jill. Okay. It's something that goes back to my college years. Whoa, that's taking it way back. Back in compulsory education, I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to always get perfect grades. And then, of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Burning my eyelashes studying, I eventually managed to keep up good grades. After about half of the career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies. She even got me into stuff that gave more credits. I really liked her. And after some time, I found out she liked me too. Oh ho ho! We started going out. I met all of her family even, and... You want a drink? What? A drink. Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. There was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending interface. <sighs> sugar rush then, you can't mess that up. Right. Jill asked for sugar rush now, how does this work? Come on, Alma, we can do it. Oh wow, we're making this as Alma. I'm gonna give Jill a big one. Wait, can I do that? I'm doing it. Can I get Jill on her own? <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Okay, mix. Here it is. Here. Thanks. How is it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. Tuh. I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know. People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You've obviously never been to a cat bar, then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when trying to move around this kind of stuff. So, 
keep telling the story. Oh, well, as the career went on and on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half of it became nothing but study session after study session, investigation, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech and suddenly while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking? I realized I lost about a year and a half of my life. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember was studying and investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all that. So I was just standing there and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. I realized I'd only gone through the motions day after day, from high school to graduating. I... I felt like years of my life had slipped through my fingers. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I never stopped. But at that point, I stopped and realized I needed a breather or something. Did I even like that career? It was all terrifying as hell. I needed all of my strength to not start running like a panicked mess. Hmm. Poor Jill. I think, I think a lot of people have felt that before. I often wonder if I wasted my years in university. It's alright, Jill. So a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility. Lenora was ecstatic. She was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding what I did during that year and a half. What if I had sudden realization like the one I had at graduation, but when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do, but I sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. I told Lenore and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Things devolved pretty quickly. She said one too many things, I said one too many things. Oh my god, this music is not appropriate for this moment. <laughs> in the end, I just stormed out of her house and I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Damn. I'm sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have, but it's not just because of that. Eh? The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabriel, came to this bar. Apparently, Lenore died last week. Oh, boy. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it. But wondering if me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true she had that for a long time, well, why didn't she tell me it was that she was sick when we were together? I don't know. I just feel like all kinds of failure. Poor Jill. Jill. And to make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yeah, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but she's just a kid for fuck's sake. She lost a sister who pretty much raised her on her own. And to top it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. Pride? Fear? A stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved as the thing of the past? Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly, forever. I'm such a piece of shit. A selfish piece of shit. Oh boy, I honestly don't know what to say. I didn't expect the story to be this. Uh oh gosh. Yo, boob tender. Uh, yes? Can you get me a big beer here? C coming right up. Big beer, big beer. What, there's a big beer in this thing? We'll figure it out. Gosh, poor Joe. That is so tough. I don't- I don't think I would know what to say either at that point. I think at that point, if you don't know what to say, right? You just sit there and listen to me, a good friend, and, you know, put your arm on their shoulder and just- just listen to them. Let them get it all out. What? Oh, I fucked it up because I was talking. <laughs> did you guys see that? How the fuck did I fuck it up? Did I do too many things? God. How embarrassing, me messing up a beer. Big beer for Jill. Thanks. Oh, she's smiling. I need to remember to take care of the cans in my apartment. Do you drink lots of beer? One of the perks of the BTC issued liver implant is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. Wow, Jill has a liver implant? Holy shit. Oh. Oh, oops, I was trying to get her drunk, Will. Hey, Jill, what kind of girl was Lenore? Well... 
She was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed and got riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. So, just like you're behaving right now. Shut up. I was worse. Can't picture that. Don't. It's embarrassing. Anyway, she was always there finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time, I saw her go from talking about video games to talking about sports. All of that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me to social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. I'm so bad at that myself. Lenore would always present to me her many acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. Oh, man, I'm gonna miss her. After a point, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but she was such an awesome person, I just wanted to apologize. And now, uh, you know, in a cruel twist of irony, she's the one that made me pick up bartending. Oh? Back when I was thinking what the hell to do with my life, I remembered a night we spent in a club. She started talking about how the drinks were synthesized and the chemistry involved and the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating, I remember saying that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said, if everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh, interesting. I mean, Jill, that's a pretty cool story, though. You're right. Are you okay? There's some value of okay, yeah? It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. Thank me? I guess I just needed someone to tell all this to, and you were the one. You volunteered yourself. You insisted on listening to me. You stood there listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. I know I might not be the most expressive person, uh, that I'm not one to spout love and fluffiness, but I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client, but I really appreciate your friendship, or at the very least your patronage. I really enjoy working for you. Oh, Jill, that's sweet. Jill, are you dying? Shut up! I'm trying to have a heart-to-heart -heart here. Sorry, sorry, it's just... It's weird for you to get so sappy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts like fucking hell, you know? I never, and I mean never, want to feel that way ever again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. I want to avoid that at any cost. If it means breaking character every once in a while, so be it. I'll let everyone know how I feel about them. Good job, Jill, that's what you should do. And if I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all the courage I can, and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. I hate it. <laughs> that's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. All right, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know. Fine. It's almost closing time anyway. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I, I mean it, you know. Thanks for everything today. Silly Jill. You listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Did you ever talk about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenore's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know. I don't want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly. They're your parents. They live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime. They'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Bye, Alma. Oh, she's so good. Take care. That Alma girl sure is nice. Uh, boss, did you hear all that? Not all of it, but a good chunk at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did? You look happier. That's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. I expect an even brighter Jill tomorrow. All right. Oh yeah, boss. About those chicken wings. Fucking idiots have the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana. We won't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow, they said. Is that how they treat their regulars? Oh, could call the manager. Boss? Oh. She went to go rant about chicken. I mean, we've all been there. Wow, today's episode was a bit longer than usual. That was a great one. Oh, Jill needed to talk to Alma about that. And Alma needed to talk to Jill too. It was so great. 
Hey, we got our bonus. Oh, I got a flow service bonus. I did it right. Cherish Titty Hacker. She's a good friend. Oh, I wish I could change my name to Titty Hacker, but I cannot, you guys. That would be a lie. Anyway. Oh, okay. We paid our electric bill. We're, we're low on funds now, but at least we paid our bill. Jill's power didn't get cut. This gives her peace of mind and now she'll focus at work with no problem. So in the next one, it's going to be Christmas Eve and we're going to go to work. Ah, oh, that's great. And I think this came out on Christmas Eve, so happy Christmas Eve, all. <laughs> so in the next one, we'll go to work, and then after that, I guess we have a party to go to, but I wonder what's gonna happen before then. We'll have to wait and see. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. I'll see you soon in the next episode. Toodaloo!